All right, so here we are live at CSS Working Group face to face. A Coruña in Spain at the Agalia headquarters. Yeah, this is the first time since Eric and I started working together that we've like been in the same physical place. It's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so it's been pretty good, I think. What do you think so far? Yeah, been some very interesting things uh, discussed. Um, I mean, some things that only a real nerd would find interesting. And as with every working group meeting, you know, sure. there are, there are issues that are effectively, we discovered this one very, you know, obscure interaction. How do we want to resolve it? And then that discussion goes on for 45 minutes. Right, right. <laughs> but then you have uh, topics like uh, today, this morning, uh, a proposal for uh, decorating gaps in grid. Oh, interesting. And... Uh, that did not take 45 minutes because everyone was like, this is really cool. It's a good proposal. Here are some questions we have about, you know, can we take this further than it, than it currently stands or do we want to defer that? In the end, uh, the discussion pretty quickly came to, yeah, let's turn that into an editor's draft. So there will be an actual editor's draft of uh, CSS gaps and rules, I think is what, was what we came up with for a name. Nice. Yeah. So it sounded like I was surprised is because I wasn't there this morning because yeah. I had to have an emergency trip to the dentist. Not really emergency. It wasn't painful or anything, but one of my crowns just decided to fall out. Yeah. <laughs> and you got it dealt with. Yeah, got it dealt with thanks to like the Herculean efforts of my fellow Egalians who live here. So yeah. thanks for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's been, I think it's been really good. We had an event last night. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tab Atkins was supposed to be on the event, but he got stuck in Amsterdam. Amsterdam, uh, and so uh, Eric filled in on the on the thing for him, and I was left to sort of try to MC that. I think it was a pretty good event. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we had a fair number of local developers show up. Yeah, and a whole lot of the working group um, was there, and. When the developers had questions, there were a whole lot of people in the room that could answer them. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had afterward, I liked that we, we ended about 15 minutes early. Mm -hmm. And I liked that we had a chance to just mingle and go talk to them because mm -hmm. that was uh, they actually had to ask us in, to leave. They had to say, yeah. hey, we're wrapping up now. Yeah. By the way, the building closes in a few minutes. Yeah. Everybody out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, there was some really, really interesting conversations with some of the students. There was, I was talking to a group of first-year students and one senior mm. and um yeah they had like really a lot of uh thoughts on on different things they were uh still really bent about uh about flash <laughs> they kind of blamed it on adobe okay that was kind of interesting uh so we didn't get to finish that conversation unfortunately because uh we had to leave but yeah it was good so we're hoping to throughout the week pull in some people and just ask them Mm -hmm. what's fun what's interesting what's painful right yeah so see how it goes cool we're here live at css working group face to face at agalia and uh i'm here with rachel andrew and i don't think anybody's ever done this before right like just done like a little chat from from uh css working group face to face no i don't think so uh, not, yeah. they've not dragged me into one anyway so <laughs> <laughs> Can you help explain, like, what, what is it like at one of these, and, and maybe, like, what do you look forward to? What do you, um, you have some items on the agenda. What, what are they? Um, yes, I've, I've got some, um, some things on the agenda for the reading order item spec that I'm working on, um, which is a proposal to essentially give developers a way to say that um, we should follow the sort of visual order, the reading order of a grid or a flex layout, as opposed to always following the DOM order, which is what currently happens. Um, so that turns out to be quite complicated to spec. So I think there's going to be lots of issues coming up over the next few months as we, uh, we've we got a, an experimental implementation in, in Chrome. Um, so, so yes, it's quite exciting. It's something I've been trying to push forward for quite a while. Um, so um, I'm very pleased to have those issues uh, on the agenda and be sort of moving it forward. Yeah, I think we mentioned this in a recent Agalia chat that like we we discussed this last time we hosted. Yes, it's what happens yeah. here, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last time we hosted, we you and I had discussed this that we should we should do a thing like this, 
and uh, I'm really happy to see. I hope I get a chance to contribute in some way to that because I think it's a really good. Uh, should have happened a while back. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, it's something we should have done. I think when we did grid, because we we basically caused a problem with with uh, the way that, that grid and flex works, and, and now we're kind of coming around to to fixing the the issues. So definitely, definitely. So um, yeah, I really enjoy when we get together. Um, do you? Do yeah. you find it's like very productive actually? Yes. Yeah. I think um, the nice thing about all getting together is, you know, we all work on different bits of CSS. You know, none of us, uh, apart from maybe Elika, are like <laughs> experts in absolutely everything. Right. Um, and so, you know, normally when there's meetings, you sort of look at the agenda. You know, we have our weekly um, sort of call. And you look at the agenda like, oh, well, these aren't any of my things really. And so you sort of check your email and do other bits while you're listening in. I think when we get together, you get to discuss actually in person a lot more of the bits and pieces that maybe you don't take as much notice of. And and that's quite interesting. You get to hear a bit more of, of the sort of the, the bigger picture as it were. Um, you know, it's a room full of people who are just really, really good at this um, and, and know all this stuff in, in depth. So there's definitely a lot to learn um, about the things that I don't normally cover. Yeah, I think one thing that is really great about these events like this or just TPAC or whatever is even the stuff that's not on the agenda, really. It's the, the yeah. thing that you're saying there, I think, that you don't get in the online, even when we're in person, is the ability to just sort of like, you're having lunch with somebody, you go for a walk with somebody, you whatever, and then you get struck up in a conversation, and you say, oh, are you, that's, I'm really interested in that too, we should talk about that. What if we, uh, and, you know, new new things are born, and re-energized yeah. that way. Yeah, well, I mean, in the reading order stuff, you know, we mainly discussed that last time at lunch and in the breaks. Yeah. You know, it wasn't, it was something that we flagged up during the meeting, but it yeah. wasn't really an agenda item. And so that discussion was something that happened kind of as a back channel. And I think lots of that kind of thing happens. And also, I think in person, you just get to see how sort of excited people are about the different things they work on. Yeah. You know, and I think people would be quite surprised about that, about actually how much people care about specific things that they're oh, yeah. pushing forward. And I think, you know, you get that feeling from people. You realise why they're so, you know, adamant that we should be doing something a certain way or whatever, because, you you know, you've got the sort of whole picture um, when we're together. And, and that really helps. All right. So we got um, <laughs> this is the crossover episode <laughs> where we have uh, Yuna from the CSS podcast. Woo! Award winning CSS, <laughs> Emmy award winning CSS podcast. Oh, I wish. Um yeah, so we just wanted to like just stop and talk to people who are here. So, um, do you have some things that are like on the agenda that you hear that you're really pushing that you care about, or are you here in more like me, the general capacity? Um, so for me, things that I'm interested in are being talked about right now actively. So things like anchor positioning resolutions, but mostly it was really convenient for me to stop by because I was already in Europe for CSS Day. All right. And then I saw a bunch of people from the working group there. So we talked, you know, a little pre-discussion about some of the issues. That was really fun. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going back to Amsterdam after this. So I thought, while I'm in Europe, might as well come in person. It's so much better than joining online, yeah. which I usually do the virtual face-to-face. -face. Um, but yeah, definitely excited to see movement, resolutions on Anchor. I want to see forward movement on masonry. That's been a point of discussion also in the working group. Um, and there's a few other items too that i think it would just be great to get resolutions on and move forward with i think the reading order thing we were just talking with rachel about would be really good too yes um yeah can we can we say that like just completely coincidentally that we both are leaving here and going to italy for a brief stand i know that's funny yeah the same thing happened to me when i left tpac uh Ryusuke from apple and i both wound up literally in florence together we had dinner uh, a couple of nice ends, so that was, that was pretty interesting. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, the discussion so far, um, mm -hmm. what do you think is the, the the best thing, the worst thing, the most boring thing? You take, give me one take. I, I think it's interesting because there's some big questions that still need to be answered, specifically around shorthands, mm -hmm. like shorthand defying some of these CSS properties. 
if that's possible, one, mm -hmm. if it's a good idea, two, right. how things should interact. Like, there's a lot of different ways that you can also combine these features when you're talking about shorthanding. Like, mm -hmm. specifically with Angry, that's one that kind of came up, but there's other ones that we were talking about, just the general concept. Um, and then what goes into the shorthand, too? Like, what properties do you want to include there? What's the order? How do you differentiate between things like custom identifiers of, you know, options that you've created versus what our defaults the browser provides right so i th i think that those conversations are really interesting like how do you make it all work yeah i liked uh i like the conversations that we were having earlier around um anchor positioning and uh like the disagreements about like how you lay out how you lay them out because there's like well there was one proposal that Alec i had that was like about using 100 percent to mm -hmm. mean 100 percent of the sort of area that you were laying out and when you hear her say it, it's like, well, that makes a lot of sense. But then somebody else points out, like, that is not the way that percentages work anywhere else in CSS. And so we don't like that. And, like, the back and forth and the debate and everything, I wish people could see a little bit more the, yeah. the conversations that go into it and how long it takes. I wanted to say yeah. that, you, like, you and I also were kind of involved in anchor positioning, like, really early on in Open UI. Yeah. And it was still, like, very... Uh, way back idea. It's and, changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I remember For the you. I remember you did a lot on that. Um, I thought you had a lot of insightful things, but I do like where it's going. Too. Yeah, yeah, I I like where it's going. I'm happy to see it actually in browsers yeah. and all the browsers working on it. Yeah. Um, those discussions are really interesting. Like when we talk about what does percentage mean in the context of insets, right. and specifically like different inset areas, and how does that work with spanning versus like being in a single cell of the inset area grid. Right. There's so many open questions for any of these topics. You can get really deep. Right. And with Anchor, like we were talking about this three years ago. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's taken that long to just even get it to a place. Where we're having these deeper conversations. I mean, it's actually pretty good. So, like, I work, I've worked on other things like inert and focus visible. And we we did a show after they both kind of in the same, basically in the same release cycle, more or less, like landed very quickly one after another. And um, we did a show after and talked about them. And when we first started talking about them, we had to go back and look at our notes. But it was seven years. Wow. Seven years from the first discussions until they shipped in all in the last browser. So, yeah, that, um, things take a long time. Yeah. Uh, Flexbox, I went back and looked at the thing. The Flexbox discussions are even longer. And if you if you like really go back to the to the real beginnings of the first time somebody suggested, I think it was Alica, it's like even longer than uh, most of the histories that people tell you that are, sound so bad. But. Yeah, things can take a long time. So, And I feel like that happens a lot, too, where people will talk about a certain feature. Mm -hmm. Container queries, for example. Yeah. That's something that developers have wanted for a long time. But either right. the tech's not there yet or there's not really a path forward. Even like with Anchor, just bringing it back to that, there's a lot of things that we want in the spec that we don't know how to solve yet. Yes. Like when you change positions, how do you you know identify that you've shifted positions and style that? that's really challenging like yeah. if, especially if you're using some of the auto options for like flipping yeah how do you hook into that well you don't have an answer yet <laughs> that's yeah that's a great i mean uh, the container queries thing is like um really interesting we were talking about the the things that happen at these and the last time we had this here um rachel's uh reading order thing mm -hmm. came out of discussions that we had here last time and container queries actually kind of they got unblocked here because we worked on it really hard and then we came with uh an idea that was much simpler than what we have now uh because it was the thing we knew we could get done you know and david said i think we can do better it's amazing the things that happen from the conversations and the things that block it and ultimately get things unblocked you know um Honestly, it's amazing how much happens in the few days that we all get together. Right? Because it's like three or four days. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I think it was even like this event feels like it's even more extended because a lot of the folks happened to be at CSS Day last yeah. week. Yeah. But, you know, it, standards take a long time. A lot of work is async. There are weekly meetings, but there's nothing like sitting down and hammering on something with a whiteboard. You don't yeah. really get that as yeah. easily virtually. And you don't get a lot of opportunity to take the thing that you're kind of interested in, but isn't sort of far enough along uh, as much as you do when you have like these like 
times when you can maybe be having a drink afterward and just mm-hmm. like casually talking about it like um uh, new ideas that, come out of that too yeah yeah some of the stuff that like rob is working on and uh, i remember you and i and mia and rob all talked about it at the new york face-to-face mm-hmm. and uh, yeah the contrast color stuff we talked about at the new york face-to-face yeah right so i think i mean there's no substitute for these kind of things anyway thanks for stopping by and talking to me yeah i'm thanks glad for... we're gonna have one of these from it's uh, cool from a real face-to-face. I don't think anybody's ever done that, so... Thanks for doing this. It's fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Here with Andro Botea, uh, who is a programmer here at Agalia and is working on line clamping in CSS. So, Andro, what's line clamping? (laughs) Yeah, so, you know, YouTube comments. You have a long comment, and it shows two lines, and an ellipsis at the end of the second line, and a show more button. Uh, how you how do you do that with CSS? Well, in in two thousand and nine, there was no way to do that, uh, and like now there is a way, but it's uh, kind of broken. <laughs> so uh, back in two thousand and nine, Apple added a uh, web line clamp property that lets you clamp based on a number of lines, and uh, they actually made it require two other properties, which were all versions of Flexbox. Uh, it also doesn't exactly do what you want because it uh, places the ellipses, but the remainder of the like of the content uh, overflows the 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 element. So you need overflow hidden. Uh, it doesn't like even with overflow hidden, you might have a padding w- through which the the clamp lines still show. Uh, it's also sort of broken for, uh, for many reasons. So we're thinking of fixing that. So the idea would be to sort of clean up a bit the behavior of WebKit Line Club. Uh, there's some web compatibility issues, so we can just fix everything mm-hmm. and add a new Line Club property, which would have the right behavior. And that would also let you uh, uh, clamp based on a height, not just on a number of lines. Okay. So I would say something like paragraph line clamp two for like two lines is that the general idea uh so you would just uh, just have line clamp two okay and uh that, that would clamp to two lines and if you want to clamp based on a height you would set a uh, line clamp auto and then either height 200 pixels or maybe max height oh i see um and so if i say 200 pixels which my text lines are almost certainly not going to come to exactly 200 pixels, mm-hmm. what will happen in that case? Uh, so if if you have, uh, well, uh, the last line which fully fits, mm-hmm. uh, like it will be clamped to that. Okay. And if you have max height rather than height, the height of the element will be set to the end of the line as, as you would expect. Oh, I see. So you would, if you're using line clamp, you would, and you want some kind of a upper length bound, you would prefer, much preferentially use max height instead of just plain height. Yeah, you, uh, like, I have a, a, a demo where you might want to use a uh, height rather than max height, which is when you're, uh, like, a demo where the height animates, and then you can see the clamping, uh, hi- uh, like, changing as the height animates, and, and there you would want height, but I think that might be uh, an use case. Hmm. Interesting. Um, okay, and so if you've clamped hmm. to a height and uh, a number of lines, and there are more lines than that, yep. And let's wh- like, what do you do with the overflow in that case? Yeah, so there are two very different versions of well, uh, there there are two di- very different proposals for what to do with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that is currently in the spec is that that content gets uh, completely discarded. It does not get laid out. It actually works based on fragmentation, which is as if you were printing things in a different page, like uh, mm-hmm. you, you would print uh, in a PDF or, or just printing a website. Right. And uh, so that content gets fragmented into a separate page and that page gets discarded. 
that is uh, that um, could be implemented currently uh, currently in Chromium uh, without too much work, but it would be very hard to do in other browsers because of the way that their layer engines work. Okay. Uh, so uh, the other proposal, which I'm currently implementing in Chromium, is y those lines are there, but they behave as if they had visibility hidden. Okay. So then you would ideally be able to reveal them in some way, perhaps programmatically. But uh, well, uh, you would uh, if you would have to remove line clamp. Right. Like the idea is that uh, nothing after the the clamp point, nothing after the ellipses gets shown, right. and everything should look uh, like should look visually as if there was no content after that. Okay, and then the ellipsis that's automatically generated. Yep. And are we leaving it up to browsers to decide how to ellipsize? Uh, that is one thing that we'll be discussing this afternoon. Uh, I think uh, so. Uh, my implementation currently uses the current behavior of what line clamp in 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 chromium okay. which is n not very good in some cases it uh behaves this like it behaves to some extent the same as text overflow ellipses but uh um, i was discussing it earlier with florian Rival, who is an expert on, on these kinds of things mm -hmm. and he was saying that that is actually kind of broken in some cases so maybe that will have to change. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, determining how the ellipsis should appear and what interaction, if any, it should have is probably an area that the working group should be addressing anyway. Yeah, that um, that gets complicated when you have uh, byte text, like a uh, text mm. in Arabic, which goes right to left, mixed mm -hmm. with text which, go, which goes right uh, left to right in the same line and where do you place the ellipses in those cases right and then if you're quoting now that material on a page that's laid out and using japanese on yep. the bottom it gets super crazy and those are all things we'll be discussing so this is actually happening this afternoon at the yep. working group we're having this discussion about line clamp and how it should well, act and yeah it's about uh uh so as we were having this parallel uh, proposals mm -hmm. we noticed some things uh some questions that could be resolved independently of both, uh, of both proposals okay. uh, so that they would apply to both and those are the questions that we will be discussing at some later point in some uh later css working group meeting right. uh, we will be discussing or looking at the the proposals in in more detail than uh seeing if we actually put the one that, that I'm working on Chromium in, in the specific in the specification right because that's I mean that right that's that's part of this process is that oftentimes these particularly when we have something new it doesn't all get decided in an afternoon or right. even a single face-to-face -face or a single conference call or whatever the working group gives a thumbs up to yes let's con you know this is how we think the basics should be and let's see how that implements and then hmm. you're working on the implementation ideally you you know you implement in time for you, the next face to face or or even sooner hmm. what the working group decided on and then you come back with okay so i did that and here are the things that i that, that came up that i didn't know how to answer because hmm. we hadn't decided that so we yeah. need to decide those things and here's how it turns out that that interacted with you know grid layout or margin trim or whatever else is being worked on or, or that is being supported what do we do when you've done this and you've done this and what those two things should do are in direct contradiction like yeah which so... one wins and how do we figure that out so that's that's all part of the process and it's sometimes why you know people will hear about oh my gosh they're gonna add you know something the line clamp we're gonna add line clamp to css when can we have it it's like that's a process <laughs> we're, we're figuring it out and we're taking the time to find out how it fits in with everything else that we're already used to yeah so that you don't have this one thing that people start using it and then saying okay i use that but it broke these six other things i was doing that are perfectly reasonable and why is this so broken hmm. yeah and i'm current like currently in the in the implementation I'm figuring out how it has to implement uh, uh, how it has to interact 
with mm -hmm. Ruby, like uh, Furigana in, in oh. for pronunciation in Japanese, mm -hmm. how it has to interact with margins uh -huh. uh, when you have uh, uh, like multiple nested elements with, with margins and borders and paddings and, and everything inside the line clamp container. Right. And those are like, I have an idea for what the, uh, for what the result should be, mm -hmm. which, uh, at some point, we'll, uh, we'll have to check with the working group. With the working group, right. But uh, it's also hard to figure out how to implement that in the way that I'm thinking of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the implementation, like for something with uh, floats that, that I was thinking, the implementation mm -hmm. was so complicated that it was better to just do something else, even if it, it gives authors, like uh, web developers, less flexibility, mm -hmm. but it would be a lot simpler to implement. Mm -hmm. And it's not clear that that flexibility is needed. Okay, yeah. Well, these are the things we figure out as part of the process. Cool. Andrew, thanks a lot. Sure. All right, so get an early start this morning. Uh, we have uh, Jonathan from uh, Wix. So uh, tell us, Jonathan, what are you working on with CSS right now? Hi, so... Uh, these days, mostly working on animation stuff. I'm trying to help a bit around the uh, view transitions where I can, and contribute from our experience at Wix. We we had a few requests that already got a few changes in, like uh, adding the view transition type, uh, and now we're talking about adding. Uh, some sort of uh, conditional selector that lets you style elements based on whether you enter the page via uh, a view transition. So you can, for example, uh, disable some animations that weren't required uh, entrance animation, stuff like that. But uh, the major part of what I'm working on is currently trying to edit a draft for a spec for an uh, animation trigger which is a mechanism to allow you trigger animations uh, based on a, on a timeline. Currently, the, the most interesting case is a, a view timeline. So it, it's building on top of uh, the constructs that we already have for uh, view timelines and uh, view timeline ranges. So you can say, uh, I want to trigger an animation uh, when an element uh, enters the, the viewport but because view timeline ignores transforms and stuff like that uh, it will know when the when the actual position of the element enters the viewport and you can configure it same way that you configure uh, scroll animations so you'll be able to trigger animations no longer with uh, intersection observer and some hacks like that it will all be declarative in CSS, and then you can change the behavior, for example, trigger the animation again and again every time the element enters and exits and re-enters. Mm -hmm. Or you can tell it to uh, animate in reverse when it's exiting, uh, or play pause for animations that play indefinitely. Uh, so this is something that I think is really cool, because browsers will be able to you'll be able to, to set the animation uh, beforehand and the browsers will know, oh, this element is not just hidden, it's actually going to do an entrance animation, uh, so I know what you're doing. And it will avoid uh, all sorts of stuff, for example, uh, if your JavaScript breaks, then the element will still show up, and yeah. won't, won't stay hidden, and it's, it's going to avoid a lot of bad stuff that's hap currently happening. and. Most importantly, like Yuna usually say at her uh, um, at her talks in conferences, like one less dependency. Mm -hmm. So this is also very important. Other proposals that I have that I hope to get to after we get this uh, merged and approved by the working group is stuff uh, to help uh, progress with uh, group effects in uh, web animations level two stuff, th there's a lot of brilliant stuff there that was already uh, written by uh, Rob Flack and Brian Birtles and I hope to get some changes there to help this progress and also I have a proposal how to get that also 
into uh, declarative syntax in, in CSS level 2. Then there's also an addition of a new property, uh, a line, to maybe get uh, start, start uh, be able to do uh, uh, staggering animations. So if you want to uh, have multiple animations uh, and have them sync in a way that they'll do a nice nice looking staggering mm -hmm. so have native way to, to stagger and do stagger animations in css web animations that could be really cool and after that i have some prototype for what you can call a hover timeline or a pointer timeline mm -hmm. and i hope to show this to people while i'm here in the face to face and after that like there's tons of ideas <laughs> Well, I just wanted to say that I, I'm glad that we got you in here because, um, you know, normally when we talk about these things, it tends to be like people we're talking about tend to be either some invited expert or uh, like somebody from one of the big browsers like Google or Apple or Mozilla or Microsoft. Um, but you're from Wix. And I, I think it's excellent that you come and that Wix is so active and that also, sometimes you focus on the things that other people aren't focused on. Um, we were just talking last night about how um, I, I look at the HTTP archive data a lot, and it's just like Wix is all the way at the top with a lot of stuff on there. And yeah, I think we forget like how much of the web gets created by you know people using Wix. It's, yeah, it's a lot, and it's great that you that you know Wix understands and cares about where it's bread and butter is from right from the from the web and reinvest in it so um yeah i just also wanted to give you y'all credit for uh investing in svg for example yeah so you've been investing with agalia helping agalia get the layer-based svg in webkit mm -hmm. working all done so thanks for that that's been yeah great. yeah that's that's great pleasure that we can can help in that yeah because this is like uh uh, long time dream of of me personally and really uh, we're ho really hoping that because SVG is really get got neglected for a decade now mm -hmm. and it's uh, way behind and it got us so many beautiful things into the web and things that were ported into CSS and uh, really what the way we see it is SVG is like this like na nature conservation mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, it's it's a beautiful and there we we can do beautiful things on the web with it, but because it has so many rough edges and so many issues, then many people just don't want to touch it. Mm -hmm. So we we have to give it some some love and some help to like get all these issues out of the way and uh, dust off all the the code bases, you mm -hmm. know, the browsers, so that we can, again, start making more beautiful things. And it requires, yeah, some, some effort yeah. from everyone. And we're really happy to be able to give our share. Great. Maybe we can get some other people to join you in that <laughs> investment would be, we can get even more done. Yeah, All I right. hope. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure, thanks. Okay, Miriam, Suzanne, superstar container queries <laughs> and uh, layers and all the good things. Nesting too, I guess. Yeah. Well. And now colors. Uh, sure. Colors. And I have regions. opinions on these regions. things. Is that? <laughs> regions is the big news of uh, CSS <laughs> working group here. Uh, yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, I think once we ship regions, we're done. So until the next thing, maybe. until the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thus there are no actual concrete plans to do regions that is specifically called that. But, um, yeah, I think you're you not allowed to use that name cause it scares people. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I saw a demo that looked a lot like it. So, uh, what do you think is the, uh, the best thing that we've talked about this week or the best thing that's happened could be in working group or outside of working group oh yeah i don't know um i mean i think it's been a good week i think we've uh 
made it through a lot of issues, although I'm never sure if we check how many we close versus how many new issues we open. Yes. Um, I'm not sure that that would make us happy uh, to find the answer there. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy that yesterday we made progress on colors. Yeah. Um, it wasn't exactly the answer I wanted, but it's a lot better than what we have now. Uh, so I'm excited for wide gamut colors to have a solution. Um, I think there's some other ones I was excited about too, but you know, we move through f so many different issues so quickly that it's like, I don't know, two days ago. I don't remember what was two days yeah, ago. I have no idea what happened two days ago. Were we even here two days ago? <laughs> I think so. Really? But we had a good time. I mean, the the meals have been nice and the company has been nice. I think the meal last night was huge. Oh, my God. So yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, by the time the main course came, I was already stuck. Yeah. I, I literally, I ate too much last night. I went back to my hotel room, like, a little uh, sad that I had eaten quite that much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Okay. That's a lot about food. We'll probably have to cut some of that. But, um <clears throat> Yeah, I don't, like, I, every time we come here, there's, like, um, you know, not, not just here, but every time we come here, I feel like we get to the bottom of and unblock a lot of things that are, like, had just been sitting there for a long time, because, yeah. I don't know, tell me what you feel about this, but, like, I feel like so much of standards is just, like, getting people to actually discuss things. Like, we open an issue... We do a bunch of work, like you do a bunch of work. I don't know if this actually. Tell me if this holds true for you, because you have been so productive. I think it's because, like, whenever you do something, people want to look at it and respond. So uh -huh. it gets the, it gets the attention. But like, really, a lot of issues they get some immediate attention, maybe, but then they just like fall off everybody's radar. Yeah. And and one of the things that happens at CSS working groups in general but especially at face to face where it's like multiple days we just churn through a lot and get attention to a lot of things which in the end seems to unblock so much right like yeah and i i sort of think of that as the process so i try to write something that explains the explains the issue explains sort of the direction i'm thinking about uh moving um, but often still with some open questions. And then I will add Agenda Plus and wait several months. Uh, right. And then I often have to go read it again uh, when the issue comes up at a face-to-face -face or uh, or a telecon, but particularly a face-to-face -face, um, for more difficult issues because uh, I think, you know, there's a certain amount of in the room just talking to each other and hashing through the questions uh, and it's sort of like at this point anything you're proposing in CSS has a lot of questions uh, it has a lot of implications there's a lot of um, how does it affect other properties how does it affect different situations what are the edge cases and we have to think through those things and having a lot of people in the room to bring up the questions a lot of people to say ah gotcha yeah exactly <laughs> uh, um, is infuriating and ultimately necessary Exactly. Uh, the, our decisions end up better for it, um, but first we have to yell at each other for a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th I think of that as the process. Like, uh, the written thing should come out a while before we have the discussion, so people have time to yeah. come up with their questions. Um, but then it also means that I have to go back and remember what I even said. I mean, uh, <laughs> I like this is. I'm glad that you said that because you know. This is actually, I think, a thing that's hard to appreciate if you've never been in it before. But, you know, we did a show on Focus Visible and Inert when they shipped because Alice and Rob and I worked on those together, both of them, and they shipped at roughly the same time. So we thought, oh, let's do like a celebratory show. Um, and we did that and we had to go back and look at the history because we couldn't even remember and we were like, holy crap, this was seven years ago. And then, like, looking at it, the thing that I'm trying to relate to here is, like, sometimes you get even these sort of, like, giga threads uh -huh. that just seem to go on forever and ever yeah. and ever. And, um... Color. They, they get 150, <laughs> 200 different... And, and some people write, like, a book. It's not, like, a... It's not, like, a small thing. And they 
they, they link to seven other issues. Yeah. I don't know how much time I have spent in my life coming back to an issue when somebody finally, like, when it finally gets somebody else's attention. Right. And it's going to be on the agenda or whatever, and they're like, uh, okay, we're going to discuss this thing, and I have to go back and look at it, and, I'm, and my heart just sinks because I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, this is going to take forever like i'm going to like i don't remember any of this at this point you know uh i think that's it's probably hard to appreciate even like how many people who write specs then have to go like look up well i don't remember the answer to that you know? yeah and i think particularly because um you know there's enough of us uh looking at different parts of css that in a meeting like this we're going through um 50 different topics yeah and you have to engage with all of them right uh and by the time you get to the fifth you don't remember the first exactly. or what you thought about it uh yeah. and you, you have to go back and and get your brain in that context again it's hard to keep it all you can't keep it all in your head so you try to write down as much as possible yes so uh mia uh works on specs and other things with uh oddbird right yeah so uh how can people give you money and uh sponsor your amazing work so that you can keep doing it oh yeah um oddbird does client work so that can range from we can help you build a website uh help you build a design system help you do a refactor come in and uh help train your team on something uh we're doing workshops all the time uh and then also we have a lot of open source work that we do. So we have an open collective or GitHub sponsors. You can help sponsor some of our open source work, um, building polyfills, writing specs, all of that sort of thing. So uh, oddbird.net would have links to all of that. Nice. And you can find us on Mastodon, oddbird at frontend social or Mia at frontend social. So this might be one of our last uh, recordings from Live at the CSS Working Group. We're here with uh, Joey Arhar. Joey, thanks yep. for joining us. And Thank this you. is your first working group meeting, I understand. Yes, it is. Okay, your fir at least your first in-person? or Yeah, my first in-person. I don't okay. think I joined in any other ones virtually. So uh, yeah, this is my first one. Cool. So what's it been like as uh, your first? It's been awesome. It's, uh, yeah, a lot of issues all day. It's... Um, I'm really impressed by everyone who can actually comment on every issue because there's so many things going on. I feel like yeah. the things I'm actually like relevant to and can talk in is like a small fraction, but like, you know, some people like Tab and Alec they seem to be commenting on literally everything. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. Um, they and Florian and uh, it might just be those three <laughs> who comment on everything, but yeah, th I mean, there are some people who just have all of CSS more or less in their heads. Although we are getting to the point now where there's a fair amount of, this should work because of these reasons, and then someone else says, ah, but there's this other reason, and they're like, oh yeah, crap. <laughs> but yeah, because there's a lot of CSS now. So what's been most interesting to you out of the three days? Well, I was just working on something. Uh, I was skipping ahead in the agenda, and I saw that um, Florian opened an issue about transparency on the accent color property. Um, mm -hmm. and how some browsers throw away the, the transparency and Firefox incorporates it by transposing it on white. Um, hmm. And it turns out that I actually, I wrote a patch in Chromium to make it throw away the alpha because it was rendering funny. Um, okay. So it was fun to kind of go back to that and I just re-implemented it. I'm excited to, to show it to everyone. Okay, um, yeah, cool. So... Uh <laughs> How did that feel to have someone d describing your behavior and you realizing, oh, that was me? <laughs> oh, it felt great. <laughs> it's really fun because yeah, then I knew like exactly where to go to fix it and stuff. Um, yeah, no, that was pretty cool. Um, you've also been uh, scribing a lot uh, in the CSS working group. On our calls, we use IRC, but um, as the discussion goes on, there's somebody basically doing their best to transcribe what everyone's saying into IRC and you've volunteered for that a lot at this meeting. Um, yeah, I figure like it's the least I can do since I feel like I'm not like actively discussing a lot of the issues. Um, but, uh, 
Yeah, it's it's tough. I feel like so I just type as fast as I physically can and try to literally write down every word that everyone's saying, but mm. I tend to miss a lot of things in those typos and I feel like other people have a way of like they must be paraphrasing or something when they also scribe stuff. Um, yeah, it's pretty tough, and I'm kind of hoping that we'll have a a bot. Even if like some kind of bot could automatically transcribe for us and makes mistakes, I'd much rather correct those mistakes than literally try to type every single word. Uh, so you you're hoping for like real time AI transcription kind of yes something that would be so nice to have. It would be very nice. I I have to be honest because I have also done scribing in my time and yeah sometimes you you have to paraphrase in order to keep up and sometimes you just miss stuff mm-hmm. um yeah and the notes are nice to have because you mm-hmm. know for meetings that i don't make it to um i can always go on github and see you know what was discussed and why resolutions were made and all that kind of stuff and it's it's like a permanent record that's really useful right so uh of the topics that we've talked about what are some that were like really exciting to you or interesting or you know, things you were like, that's awesome that we have that decision, that sort of... Yeah, I'm trying to remember. There are some things about the... Or there's one issue about the select element that I agent a plus, but I don't think we're going to get to it at mm. the face-to-face. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember... When you say the days. select element... Yes. Describe that a little more. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm working on a big project to make the select element styleable. Uh, okay. And there's a new proposed value for the appearance property called base, which is supposed to opt you into this like new styleable mode for form control elements. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really hoping that we can make progress on it. Um, cause it's like my uh, one big job this year. <laughs> okay. So is this based on open UI work or? Yes, it is very much based on open UI work. We've been incubating it in open UI since like, 2019 or something like that and i started yeah. working on it about a year ago and uh yeah everyone there has uh, put a lot of work into designing all kinds of little behaviors everything from like you know should the options have check marks next to them to what should the keyboard behavior be and mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff um so there's a lot that's in there right now and i'm kind of hoping that it'll be well received um, right. but it is a very very big projects there's like so much that it goes into it so basically this is a trial implementation of open ui's work on styleable form elements and the idea is to get the working group to agree to do that or to agree to do the switch to let us do that like what is the issue um, to be discussed here exactly right right so the one thing was like by shedding the the name of the new appearance value because so and bike shedding, for those who are not familiar, is where everybody argues about what the exact name should be. Yeah, 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 right. And so the proposed name is Base, but mm-hmm. I don't think there's been, like, a ton of discussion about, like, is that the right name or not? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one of the first things we are going to get to. Um, right. But there's many, many issues, including, like, what exactly should these user region styles be, which there are a lot of, um, and, like, what, how should the whole structure of this select element be? Mm-hmm. And then also this whole appearance value thing, in theory, should apply to all form control elements. So it right. almost is like an endless amount of possibilities and conversations about every form control. So Yeah, that would be a huge area of, of discussion. I mean, it's good that the Open UI has the work there for the working group to look at and then be able to say, hey, is this going to fit with CSS as it currently exists? Like, is it going to work in browsers? Hopefully we do get to that this afternoon, but if not, I'm sure a, uh, a near future working group weekly call will address it. So, uh, Yeah, certainly. Lately we've um, established a task force that's a combination of the what working group and the CSS working group to talk uh-huh. about form control elements. So right now that's kind of where most of the discussion is happening. Okay. Yeah, cool. All righty. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Okay, we're back being live at the CSS Working Group meeting, and uh, I'm talking to Ian Kilpatrick. Hi. Ian, thanks for dropping in. No, that's um, okay, right? It's great. It's been uh, quite a few quite a few days. It has been. It yeah. has been. What's, uh, what's been interesting to you the most? Um, 
So I'm actually looking forward to like one of the issues um, later this afternoon, mm-hmm. uh, which is about how do we allow developers to more, you know, to have more control over how an element affects, you know, the scrollable overflow of its parent. So, you know, one common one common request that developers have is, you know, they might like, you know, transform or place an element like up in the top right corner. But they don't want it to like contribute to like any. You don't want to be able to like scroll into it. It like it might be like rotated, for example, mm. and so you don't want to actually like allow that like little bit on the edge to be like scrollable. Like you don't want to you know, allow you know the scroll to like scroll into that like little corner. You just want it to okay. like clip, if that makes sense. So you you want it to be clipped off, but you can't use overflow scroll. Yeah, right. Because exactly. Because then yeah. suddenly there will be a little horizontal scroller, yeah. so you can see the little bit of the new banner that you yeah. Exactly. We're trying to stick out the site. Yeah. Okay. Um, and th- there's like variations on this. Uh-huh. So, for example, you might want to like, you know, animate a element in, you know, via like transform or something like that. Okay. And so you don't want, you want it still to contribute to over- scrollable overflow, but you don't want the transformed part of it to. Yeah. So you can imagine, you know, you're like animating something in or like, you know, you're like manually you're animating along some curve so it's like not on the composite so it's going to change the scrollable overflow each time mm. but you just like want to do that in such a way but you don't want that like bit to be scrollable you just want like as final position to be scrollable okay um and so you know there's a there's a proposal you know to do this that there, there might be like multiple switches so you know one of these switches might be ignore you know this element's contribution to scrollable overflow completely just like ignore it okay. um the other one might be just ignore the transform component of that case so that covers you know the animating in type uh-huh. of case uh-huh. um developers you know achieve yeah you know, it's very hard to do the the sort of like transforming in case they like ignore it completely developers there's yeah there's some hacks basically that people <laughs> use to achieve this I'll, I'll leave it at that for the sake of sake of brevity but yeah it keeps on it keeps on coming up when you know i chat with you know web developers um i was a web developer previously um in my former life and yeah i, w- I would have used this um mm-hmm. so that's sort of what's what's exciting to me so how how do you feel about the uh the if thing you want to talk about yeah that? yeah i think okay I so think... Let, let, so let me introduce yeah. you so uh, we just just this morning, the working group decided to add an if statement effectively mm-hmm. to CSS. Uh, what what were you thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, it keeps on coming up with um, developers. I think in the initial explorations of container queries, mm-hmm. we had, you know considered something uh, similar. Um, uh, you know, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where it lands. Um, I think if is probably pretty good. Another another thing you could imagine is like in functional language, you sort of just want to like, you know, match something. Mm. So you just want to say, hey, like if, you know, this variable is foo, then like do this or you know, and you just like do case matching. That could be another solution space. But probably, you know, to most developers, you know, the if um, the if uh, function might might be good enough. Um, right. Yeah. And, so, and in what context does this appear? The if, um, sort of when you're doing like um, variable substitution, um, okay. it, it it applies basically. Um, uh, I don't know the exact details of the grammar. That's sort of again like slightly out of my wheelhouse. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah. Co- conceptually, like there's no. Uh, I don't believe at least there's no. Um, there's no fundamental like problem. Um, but uh-huh. again, you know, I'm not the the style expert on our team, not, so not the style. Expert. You know, okay. I, I defer. You know, we might have under the runner. Um, you know, go. You know, there's this fundamental issue that we need to consider, or something like that. But yeah, on the surface, it's yeah, it solves it solves the developer need. Um, yeah, so be great. be able to say, you know, if this, if we have this variable, do this thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Basically. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And appar- apparently, uh, from what I from what I understood from the discussion and. It seemed like it was actually not just an if, but sort of an if, else, if, else, if, else. Yeah, yep. And then... Yeah. And that, 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 that kind of, like, you know, lends... Like, that's why I think of it a little bit more as, like, 
pen matching type of thing mm, versus mm-hmm. like a if else um but you know same you know different side of the same coin right um, makes so sense scenario cool uh anything else that's gotten you sort of um not not too much um there wasn't sort of too much uh I mean, there, stuff. well there was layout stuff but you know nothing nothing groundbreaking um mm-hmm. uh so, so then what layout stuff was there <laughs> I've, 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 I've told well the, what, what i mean is if it wasn't groundbreaking then like you know what was the what were the layout topics generally yeah i mean a lot of the case like time you know it's like small um details on like mm. how to how to you know adjust things or fix things you know one, one thing in particular that came up is um that people might be interested in is uh line clamp for example oh, okay. um, and yeah. how that works right. um so you know a few years ago um you know people that are familiar with like line clamp on the web mm-hmm. um you know, know that you have to write you know display webkit box WebKit box orient vertical and then WebKit line clamp to or whatever. Right. Um, and so internally, like browsers will like Firefox and, and Blink at least will like map um, display WebKit box over to display flex. WebKit box is effectively a flex box, but like some subtle modifications. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you line clamp, for example, um, you really don't want it to be a flex box and so both like gecko and blink um will actually create a display block or a display flow route instead mm-hmm. um and so you know part of the discussion was you know enshrining that like actual behavior into a spec and then the exact mechanism of how we do that is uh, another you know issue open for discussion mm-hmm. um but i think like there is a path forward for a standards based you know line clamp implementation um which you know, agalia is working on at the moment and i'm and, and, I'm, revi- and I'm reviewing um, yeah so cool. it's great so so far so good yeah so far so good okay. um yeah implementation <laughs> is looking really solid um there's a few few corner cases that we need to uh look at mm. um but yeah i'm 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 pretty hopeful in that we'll land on a pretty right. good solution there pretty soon yeah and i mean that's as you know that's what a lot of um working group discussions actually are are the okay we we've done the thing that the working group agreed to do and we found these corner cases yeah and yep. how are we supposed to deal with those yep. how you know this line clamp happens to interact with max width yep. in a flex environment when it's inside a grid in this way yep and you know when you look at this spec and then this other spec they directly contradict <laughs> How are we supposed to resolve this? And yeah. the working group's got to figure it out. So, For, fortunately, we're getting to a stage where like the boundaries between all the different like loud algorithms are much more mm-hmm. like solid mm-hmm. than they were previously. Previously, yeah. they were like pretty um, like amorphous and like icky um, <laughs> to put it like, especially like you know the CSS two stack says like a lot of things. Um, some of it correct, some of it you know uh, wishful <laughs> okay. thinking. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah like i yeah i don't think that you can like you know for example like go through the css2 spec and come out with like a compliant like a web compatible block layout for okay. example okay um to all of you that you know want to write a block layout algorithm out there uh yeah don't yeah, i wouldn't necessarily take the css2 spec um you know as verbatim okay uh, for example um but yeah i think like you know more recently like you know we've like solidified the boundaries between everything um so that there is like a pretty clean conceptual interface between everything so we're not you know dealing with as many of these problems anymore okay um yeah cool all right ian thank you cool thank you very much okay so css working group face to face june 2024 it's come to a close. It's in the books. Yep. Um, I fell asleep a few times. How <laughs> long? Two weeks. Yeah, I mean, you've been traveling quite a bit. I I came out yeah. just for this working group, but you were 
you were doing you were at the web engines hackfest and yeah. you were at the Gallia week and you were you're here now and you're still not going home and yeah I you know, it's a little bit of a little bit of a an odyssey for you yeah for me it's in and out i might have also fallen asleep but <laughs> i can neither confirm nor deny that uh, it was not really the sub the subjects or anything. It's just no. it's a lot of meetings and it's, and a, it's a, a lot, lot of, of travel and and a lot of mental power going into the concentration yeah. on the topics and yeah all that sort of thing. Yeah, it's it can be very draining. Yeah. <clears throat> so and also we discovered that in Spain you don't even start eating dinner until like nine thirty or ten at night. Oh yeah. And so yeah. you get back to your hotel at eleven thirty or midnight and then you you know wind down and go to sleep and then you got to get up to do stuff and it's just yeah and you're supposed to be ready to talk about tomorrow's topics too so you yeah know. yeah well uh i don't know i think this is fun i think egalia did a pretty decent job of hosting it yeah uh, i think we yep always like having everybody here that's for and, sure uh yeah i don't know hope the interviews are interesting yeah i think they will be yeah it'll be all good and then you know Maybe we'll uh, do this again sometime. Yeah. Live from, live from the face-to-face -face working group meeting. Cool. 